Hello, good evening and welcome to Church Online this Wednesday evening. Being the first Wednesday of a new month, it's a missions focus and this evening I'm delighted to introduce Mike Fernandez, who's the Scottish coordinator with Latin Link. Latin Link would describe themselves as being an international community with a calling to love God, to serve God and our neighbour. And after the short presentation this evening, there will be as usual our Zoom prayer meeting at eight o'clock. But for now, here's Mike Fernandez. Dear brothers and sisters from Hamilton Baptist Church, please have a huge hello from, from me today. It's been about three years since last time I visited you and I would have loved to come and see you face to face, but unfortunately, we are not able to do that at the moment. But I'm really grateful for the joys of technology that at least you're able to hear from me. And to give an update about what's going on in Latin America and what's going on with the ministries of Latin League and how you can continue to pray for us. So I hope through this talk and also through a couple of videos that I'll be showing, you will be able to know in which ways you can engage with us. Although for us, moods are changing and things are improving, not only because our weather is turning brighter and better, but also we are seeing behind this very difficult second wave we all have to face. Things in Latin America are not as good as here. They are at the peak of the second wave at the moment, and it's definitely taken its toll in Latin America. It's been more deadly and more contagious, and has caused a lot of shortages in oxygen and in ICU beds. The mix of the Brazilian variant and the British variant have just made the whole continent to be in a difficult time at the moment. So countries like Mexico, Brazil and Peru have been the most affected. As you can see in all these images from different headlines for newspapers, uh, the lockdown has been implemented in different tiers in different countries and different places, but has been very devastated for a hand-to-mouth economy, especially in countries like Bolivia, Guatemala, Honduras and Peru. Quite often people wonder what a hand-to-mouth economy is. It's basically that kind of economy where you have to work today to be able to have money to buy things tomorrow. So you work on a daily basis, whatever comes to your hand will go to your mouth basically. And that's one of the issues that most of rural Latin America have to face. And also the issues with rural Latin America in which not many people have access to fridge and freezers. So you're not able to store things for you to, to abide by the wrong lockdown restrictions. And that's what's caused a lot of complications. Most of the Latin American countries now have started a vaccination rollout. Although they haven't secured as many vaccines as they are needed at the moment, and particularly because most of the ones produced in the West had been uh, already booked and they are not really available. So the, the goods of the Chinese vaccine and the Russian vaccine have been probably the most desired at the moment. And they are the ones who have been helping you throughout this pandemic when, when the vaccination rolled out. Chile, from all the Latin American countries, seems to be the one who is working with a more adequate uh, vaccine rollout at present. But Latin Americans not only have to face a pandemic and its effects, but also they have to deal with a problem that is common to most of Latin Americans, the problem of corruption. There has been many scandals happening in, in Argentina, Peru, as you can see these headlines, where politicians and people have queue jump their position to get vaccinated and they just decided to to do that even in the mix there was issues in ecuador where the police have to shut down a clinic that was injecting thousands with the fake covid 19 vaccine so this is a sort of things that are being going on in, in latin america and hopefully you can pray more for that and my intention by no means is to depress you with this news but actually to tell you so you can pray in a more informative way as well. But the words of the Apostle Paul to the Church of Corinthians come, come to my mind in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4 verses 16 to 18 where he says, Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly 
we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs than all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And I can think of no better passages to sing in this situation. Although the issues that the Corinthians were facing are totally different, yet Paul's word to the Corinthians are still the same. Everything that has been happening to us through these months has been difficult. It has been troubles, difficult to comply, difficult to, to deal with. But yet, even in the midst of the most difficult times that we all have to face, our Lord has been faithful and he's been there near for us to come and clinch to. And yet he's, this is the Apostle Paul telling the church in Corinthians says, although our troubles are light and temporary, yet if we fix our eyes on Jesus, we are able to be with him. We are able to feel that his eternal love for us is there to encourage us. And is in that light of encouragement, I'd like to share with you a few things that last link has been going on. First, let's hear from Rose Wade, who serves in, in Latin America. Hi, my name is Rose Wade and I'm from Sainfield in Northern Ireland, but I'm currently living and serving in Guatemala and Central America with Latin Link. My main role is with a Guatemalan Christian NGO called Ami San Lucas. Ami San Lucas has a focus on community health, community development and integral mission. Just like the rest of the world, here in Guatemala we have also been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Guatemala doesn't really have the health infrastructure to manage this kind of pandemic. As a result, the healthcare system here has collapsed. There are no beds in the hospitals here in Guatemala. But there is hope in all that is going on and in the midst of this crisis. We've been able to support families through the delivery of food parcels, hygiene packs, and also other support that's enabled families to pay for their rent, to pay electricity, to pay for medicine or food that they identify as necessary for them at this time. Just recently, in the last number of weeks, some of the team were delivering support to a couple of the communities. And they met and spoke with one of the ladies there. She's called Petrolina, and Petrolina is a mother of five children. And because of the pandemic, her husband lost his job. Um, he has been able to find some small amount of work um, selling firewood, where he earns about three pounds a day, but can only get work one or two days a week because of the situation. And many days they have struggled to find enough food, and they maybe scraped together something for the children to eat, but they as parents have not been able to eat. She expressed her thanks and gratitude for the support of receiving a food parcel um, and to anybody who had donated in any way because this was going to secure them to have food for another 15 to 20 days. As a church, we have a chance to offer hope in a time of crisis. We are called to be salt and light in this world and we have this opportunity now in the midst of this pandemic to be different, to live differently and to offer hope to those in need at this time. As you can see what from what Roseway said, uh, the pandemic has been causing the struggles in different ways. Now we're going to hear from Rodolfo Rodas, who is telling us what they have been doing through this pandemic where he is serving. Hola, soy Rodolfo Rodas. Soy Latin Link, sirviendo en Guatemala. Y en 
en este contexto que estamos viviendo por causa de la pandemia, eh, desde el ministerio que actualmente dirijo, la Asociación eh, de Educación Alternativa Cristiana Educando para la Vida, hemos eh, enfrentado el desafío de seguir acompañando a las familias que han experimentado diferentes efectos por causa de la pandemia. Uno, que sus niños no sigan yendo a clases. Dos, que sus esposos sean suspendidos de sus trabajos. Tres, eh, la experiencia de vivir en casa entre niños, esposo y esposa, uh, reaprendiendo a estar juntos, puesto que la mayoría de ellos vivían siempre en el campo, trabajando o en diferentes actividades y ahora tienen que estar juntos. Semillas de Esperanza es el proyecto de construcción de huertos familiares en donde las familias pueden ser participantes de su propia sostenibilidad, donde ellos pueden eh, integrarse como familia y poder participar en espacios reducidos de tierra en su casa o prestando un espacio con algún otro vecino, pueden desarrollar huertos de, de hortalizas. Y ha sido extraordinario ver que este proyecto de Semillas de Esperanza eh, no solo va a producir sostenibilidad para la alimentación, sino que también puede producir un producto que va a ser compartido entre las familias, pero también ha provisto armonía y ha traído reconciliación en las familias y ha provisto una oportunidad en la cual los niños, los padres, la mamá pueden estar juntos trabajando.
there are many ways that you can step into this story. Like, you could sign up to our monthly devotional, so the hot shares devotional. It's a devotional focus and mission. And we generally go through the lives and inspiration from so many of our Latin League members serving. It's a devotional who comes every month. And if you are able to sign up for that on our website or in this link, that will be very helpful for us. We also came up with the same devotional available on a podcast. So you can listen and just an audio. You can just you can just download this podcast and just be driving a new car and you'll be able to listen to our monthly devotional. That would be one way to step into the story. Another way to step into the story would be to continue to pray for us. Please pray for us. Pray for Latin Link. Pray for our members. Pray for the ministries. Pray for all the different things that Latin Link members are doing in Latin America and how they try to help and support the people. Not only the physical needs, but also spiritual needs. There is a lot of things happening in Latin America, as I said to you earlier, that we could be, you could be praying for. Pray for the things that we are doing here as well in, in, in Scotland and in the UK, because we also have ministers happening here in, in the UK as well. Another way for you to step into this story would be to help us uh, sharing and probably using our new children's ministry resort. It's basically a resort that aims to discover how God's hope can change lives and how you can be part of sharing it with the world. It's created for children aged to 5 to 10 and customizable sessions and you it's suitable for online in person. You can do it with your children, you can do it with your grandchildren, you can just use the resort. It's available and it's free, it's very practical, you can, it's very engageable as well, have different materials. So all I can do now is to show you some images of the resource. It may encourage you to you to go to the link and download the resource. If you have older children, we also have available a youth resource designed for children between 11 to 16 years old with the same idea, the idea to share biblical hope. This one as well is customizable and you can do it as a one-to-one. -one. You can do it with your children, with your grandchildren. You can just have a good use of that. I'm also showing some images of what this resource is about, so hopefully it may encourage you for you to go to this link and use this resource. I would really love to continue telling you more about some of the things that we have been involved, but I'm very conscious of the time. And I just wanted to say thank you very much for your willingness and your disposition to hear from us, to support us, and to continue to be a good partner of the Ministry of Latin League. We just ask you for you to continue to pray for us and I certainly look forward to the time that we are allowed to come and when I can come and join you and meet you. In the meantime, thank you very much for everything.